Okay, dear subscribers and viewers of this channel, uh, this moment I, w I want to share with you something which I believe is going to bless you. It's a talk about what's happening in the church and an advice that I can give to everyone who is watching and listening. I know in the church who has been facing challenges. No, what should I do with what's happening in the church? First, we know the Seventh day Adventist Church, the true church of God. It's a church in matter of movement, okay? It's a church, it's a true church in matter or in the concept of the movement. God as the worldwide church where it has people in different denominations. But for us as Seventh day Adventist Church, according to the prophecy, uh, the book of Revelation, we have the duty, we are the remnant given, the duty to proclaim the three angels' messages and the second coming of Jesus Christ and calling people the obedience of the commandments of God and uplifting Jesus Christ as the own righteousness, not any righteousness of man, uh, calling people to live by faith and the righteousness by faith. That's what the thing we have been given to do. But knowing this does not mean we are safe. I want to compare the Seventh day Adventist church with the um, Israelite nation because God, by that moment, was God of the nation. And the nation was uh, Israel. And by that moment, this does not mean that God did not have people who worshipped him in other countries or in other nations. They were there. For example, when we trace back unto the time of Abraham, he met Melchizedek. He was not uh, a Hebrew, okay? But we find Melchizedek was the high priest for God, okay? And not only that, when we go to the time when Israel were coming, they faced a person who was called Balaam. Okay. Balaam, who was the witch, by the way, uh, he knew God, though he had some of the witchcraft things. And so his heart was right. was not right, but at least he had the information about God. Not only that, there were many who knew God in other nations who had dead them. Because if we can see... Ishmael was the son of Abraham. When he left, he had the knowledge of God of heaven. Okay. And Abraham got many children, by the way, and some of them accepted God. So it was not new to other nations that Israel were the only one who knew God, other all nations were pagans, not. But because Israel had the special duty to work on, on spreading the message of who is God, and through them, God gave all oracles, which were very important for that moment, so that they can share with other people to know who is God. So they were the hands where God had to pass through all informations concerning the life of the believers. This, uh, the same nation where the place where the nation where the Messiah are to be born from. So God prepared that nation as the, as the, the precious nation for him to reveal himself to all nations. We can see that from uh, at the time of Babylon, okay, the, 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 uh, the Jews, those three, four young boys were the one who gave the message to Nebuchadnezzar, though he had, at least, he had the information even before taking them through the message of Jeremiah. But that's a prophecy. But what I can say is, in this one, although things happened to give us the picture of who we are, Israel was not free from the attack of the devil because they were a single nation under the God's control, given the oracles of God. Then the devil has to invest all the power to make sure this nation does not continue in a God's will. So that to obstruct, to cut off the messages that God has for the world. Because they knew any message to come to bless the world had to pass through this nation that was Israel. So he had to give all the time to make sure the nation become apostasy, bring a lot of things, idolatry, and raising up kings and all those things. That's why the key prophets, even the kings are to worship idols. What about now? When you elect that nation, Israel, which was 
uh, end, uh, it ended uh, when the kid Stephen, 34 AD. Then let us go to the Church of, of Seventh-day Adventists. What are they doing? They have been called to share the message of the second coming of Jesus, three angels' message, and the other messages that God has provided. God has seen the Seventh-day Adventist Church at the hand that it can use to bless the nations, to bless the churches, to send the messages to all churches fallen under Babylon so that they can lift up their standard and live as God wants. Through this church, God has given a lot of message, the health messages, the state of the dead, and other things that the church can give to bless all the nations, the end time events, and all those things that which all those things which has to happen has been given through this church. And so, what we find in this one, because it's the only church that God has to save others. It's the movement, are the people that God has taken himself out to make sure that they can go outside and share the message to those people. God loves all people in different churches. He doesn't hate them. They are his creation. And so God loves them. And he wants us to share with them the truth. We have not been given this truth for us. Just like a car which drinks its own milk. We have been given the message to live for ourselves, but also to share. Health message for us that we might not be sick, but also to share with us end, end time events. We know them, what's going to happen about the Sunday law, about all those things. They are, they are happening. And so we have been given the duty to share even others. But what do we need to do now is to know that because we are single, working to bless others, the devil will have all power invested to make sure that this church become Babylon. He will never succeed. Why? Because we have been given information, prophetic message, that the church will look like going down, like falling, but it will never fall down and become Babylon. Why? Because the time of shaking will come. The surety comes that all evils may come to the church, but there will be a time of shaking where God will uproot and take away all those people and teachings which are not biblical. So it's not a matter of us warning that I have to leave the church. Where, when you leave the church, where do you go? Just compare the time of Israel. When Israel became sinful, do you think that people said now because Israel has fallen now, I want to become a Moabite? I want to become um, a Philistine? to go and live in the Philistine because, uh, because the Israel had fallen. I have to go and, and go somewhere and live in Assyria because Babylon, uh, because Israel has worshipped Baal. No, they remained Israelites waiting for something good to come. So when things happen in the church, which, are not, which you see that they are not good uh, biblically, what we need to do is to remain I don't suggest the agenda of leaving the church. Why? Because if something is bad, God is looking at this church, knowing that he has to place through this church to prepare people for his coming. And then he knows how to deal with these people whom we think that they are evil. Some people are thinking this one is evil, this one is Sometimes it's human perception. Sometimes it's its own imagination. But we have to stay. Stay, pray. We worship God with those people who are calling God with a pure heart. Join with them and cry to the Lord. Crying, God, do you see this? Do you see this? Don't be a person who only talks about what is happening in the church and you don't spend even five minutes a day to pray for those problems. So you and devil becomes one person doing the same thing of condemning your brethren of what is going by. Just spend time praying. I don't say you should not speak. We have to speak. Yes, prophets spoke the truth of the evil what was happening. Just speak, okay? Just speak. But do you spend more time on your knees praying for what is happening and less time in, in talking? 
Because when you spend more time, you will be given the spirit to guide what you need to do. It's not a matter of only speaking. Because when you speak out of emotions, you are raising other people's emotions, and not their spirits. They are going to act on emotions and not on spirit. So we need to know that these things are happening. But because they're happening, we have to remain the church. We have to remain the church. My friend, I want to encourage you that we are living in the time when things are going to be more confusing, even this church. Now I've heard the issue of women on nation. We have heard the issue of gay in the church. And many things may come like a wind pushing out and, and within. Like the only one who will remain in this ship is the only one who is going to be safe. Remain the ship and let God work. It will be tossed by waters from without and shaking from within. But God will make it safe. Remain. When you want to leave, tell yourself, why am I leaving? When evil comes, when you see leaders are not following what the church stands for, ask God, what do you want me to do? Have a vertical communication. Make sure your vertical communication remains safe. Don't protect your, your horizontal uh, relationship with the church and black the vertical relationship. And some people say, yes, I have to leave because the, the, the horizontal affects me. No, you have to work with God and through your life, let others people, other people see. We are not being told to leave, but we are being told to stay and be the light of the world. Okay, my friend, some will not accept what I speak. I'm sure, and I'm not worrying about this because I do believe we have free choice. But I have to tell you what you need to think. Make sure every day you have a communion with the Holy Spirit, with God, with Jesus. You are in love with Jesus. He will give you peace. And the peace he will give is not what the church can give you. The peace that he will give, the government cannot give you. The peace that the Holy Spirit will give, nobody can provide. You will have the peace. And you're waiting for the time when God is going to work. Something to remember, in a prophetic timeline, there's a time when the church will sleep. What that time? So when you consider prophets, prophets, when you find that maybe this is the time of sleeping, you have the time of sleeping, do I have to give up? Do you have to go out? This is prophetically spoken by Jesus Christ himself. And so what do I have to do? It's sleeping. Let me not sleep. Let me keep my oil burning. Let me do. Even yourself, you may think you are working, but at least you are sleeping. You are working not to the highest moment, not the highest magnitude you can use and power to bring the gospel. There's some of the slumbering nature in you, though you think you are working, but not like apostles. Jesus was everything. Preaching the gospel was everything. But what about you? So the church in totality we are sleeping, but we, we differ in the way. So, my friend, it's prophetic time. We need to know the church is at sleep. Jesus is the one who is going to rise it up. But don't move and go out and leave the church. Stay. Pray. If you can talk with God in this church and God is speaking to you, stay. Where are you going? Because those who are going, actually, they are going to come back. Some, but not all. Some will live and live forever. How sure are you that when you leave, you're going to come back? You're going, this church is going to be purified, and some will, will come back. Who left for the lessons. And God will tell them, you just come. This is true. Come back. And some will come and join. Some will leave. So if that's so, and you believe in the spirit of prophecy, why do you have to leave? Stay. Don't be judgmental. Get connected to Jesus. Share the gospel. Tell the truth. I don't say don't speak the truth. Tell the truth. But in love, 
show the character of Jesus. Show the love of Jesus. Don't show self-righteousness. We have been called to lift up Jesus. And when he is lifted up, he's going to bring all people to himself. May God bless you. If you have any comment, I will comment on the comment section. But if you have questions, also ask. But don't forget, if you want to support the ministry or the, the YouTube channel, don't forget to click the link on the description on Patreon and welcome to become the supporter of this channel. May God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.